Hey guys, welcome back. Let's get straight to the point. What actually happens to your prostate if you masturbate every day? It's a question many men think about but rarely ask. Today, we cut through the stigma and the rumor mill with calm, evidence-based guidance for men over 50. I'm Anna Berg, and my goal is to give you clarity, confidence, and a plan you can start today. First, a quick map of the territory. The prostate is a walnut-sized gland that sits just below your bladder and wraps around your urethra. It makes the fluid that protects and carries sperm. In your 20s and 30s, it works quietly. After 40, it naturally tends to grow. That growth, often called BPH, or benign prostatic hyperplasia, is not cancer, but it can squeeze the urethra and create the annoyances you might know too well. A weaker stream getting up at night and that never fully empty feeling. Now to the big question, is frequent ejaculation, solo or with a partner, good or bad for the prostate? Large long-term studies have suggested a protective association. Men with higher ejaculation frequency, about 21 plus times per month, showed a lower risk of prostate cancer compared to men with lower frequency. One proposed reason is the flushing effect. Regular release may help clear inflammatory secretions and cellular debris. Important note though, ejaculation is not a magic shield. It's one helpful habit among many. You still need smart food choices, movement, sleep, and regular checkups. Equally important are the age-related changes happening under the hood. Three trends matter most after 40. One, enlargement and fluid retention. The gland grows and may empty less efficiently, raising low-grade inflammation. Two, shifting hormones. The body converts some testosterone to DHT, which can stimulate prostate cell growth. Three, accumulated cellular wear and tear. Over decades, tiny replication errors become more likely, which is why screening and prevention matter. Before we go further, do a quick favor for your future self. Hit like so more men see this and drop a comment with the single symptom or question you most want cleared up. Your experience helps other viewers feel less alone, and I read every comment. If nighttime bathroom trips and weak flow days are wearing you down, consider targeted pelvic floor training. A compact at-home trainer can help you learn precise Kegel technique, build endurance in the muscles that support the bladder and erectile function, improve control, and enhance circulation where it counts. It's quiet, discreet, and designed for gradual progression. You'll find a link in the top comment. Check it out if you want a structured way to get results while you watch the rest of this video. Back to the physiology. Remember, the goal is not perfection, it's momentum. Small daily wins compound. Keep watching, because in a minute I'll give you a four-pillar plan for prostate health you can start today, even if you've been inconsistent for years. And if you find this useful so far, share the video with a friend who keeps meaning to get checked. That nudge might change his life. Let's also clear up a common worry. Won't daily masturbation cause erectile problems? In healthy men, there's no good evidence that reasonable frequency damages erectile tissue. Problems often come from the context, poor sleep, high stress, sedentary days, or excessive alcohol, more than from ejaculation itself. That said, listen to your body. If you notice pelvic soreness, irritability, or a drop in sensitivity, ease off for a few days, prioritize sleep, hydrate, and focus on gentle pelvic floor relaxation before restarting. Screening still matters. Ejaculation frequency might correlate with lower long-term risk, but it does not replace regular checkups. If you're 50 plus or earlier with risk factors, family history, African ancestry, or concerning symptoms, talk to your clinician about PSA blood testing and a digital rectal exam. Early detection is not about fear. It's about options and peace of mind. Quick myth busting. Prostate enlargement isn't a moral failing. Prostate cancer isn't caused by sex and urinary symptoms are common and manageable. You're not broken, you're adapting. With smart habits and the right tools, most men can feel and function significantly better within weeks. What changes after 40 and how to work with them? Let's zoom in on the three trends I mentioned and translate them into levers you can actually pull. Enlargement and low-grade inflammation, BPH. 
As tissue expands, the urethral pipe narrows. The bladder then works harder, leading to urgency, dribbling and night waking. Two practical wins, lighten the bladder load and lower inflammation. That means front-loading fluids earlier in the day and tapering after dinner, cutting back late-night alcohol and training the pelvic floor to coordinate relaxed contract instead of constant clenching. Add a five-minute evening downshift, slow nasal breathing, gentle hip mobility, then lights down 45 minutes before bed. Hormone shifts, testosterone, DHT. Some conversion to DHT is normal and useful, but excess can nudge prostate growth. You can influence this more than you think. Strength training, two to three short sessions weekly, and carrying less visceral fat, both support healthier T metabolism. Diet helps too. Think colorful plants, omega-3s, fatty fish, walnuts, and cruciferous veggies, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, that support hormone balance. Green tea, turmeric, and extra virgin olive oil fit nicely in an anti-inflammatory pattern. Cellular wear and tear. Aging raises the statistical chance of errors during cell replication. That's why screening and recovery basics matter. Sleep seven, eight hours, stay active daily, and manage blood pressure, glucose, and cholesterol with your clinician. These boring fundamentals are quietly powerful for your prostate and overall longevity. Where does ejaculation fit? Treat it like any other health input, useful within a balanced routine. If you're comfortable and pain-free, regular sex or masturbation can be part of a prostate-friendly lifestyle. If you feel depleted, scale back, focus on sleep, hydration, and light movement, then reintroduce slowly. A quick word on testing and timing. If you're scheduling a PSA blood test, ask your clinician whether to avoid ejaculation, cycling, or vigorous pelvic exercise for 24-48 hours beforehand. These can mildly bump the number and add noise. If your PSA is rising, don't panic. Results need context and trend lines. That's what your urology team is for. Let's get even more practical with friction fixes, small tweaks that pay off fast. Caffeine cutoff, eight hours before bed to reduce nighttime urgency. Two minute bathroom reset. If you strain to start, pause, deep belly breathe for five slow counts, relax the belly and pelvic floor, then try again. No rushing. Meal balance. Half your plate non-starchy veg, a palm of protein, a thumb of healthy fat. Heavy evening meals keep the bladder busy all night. Tomato power. Cooked tomatoes, paste, or sauce bring lycopene, an antioxidant associated with prostate support. Pair with olive oil for better absorption. Walk after dinner, 10 to 15 minutes to aid glucose control and calm the urge reflex. If this resonates, tell me in the comments which of these you'll start tonight. Your ideas often become the next video and they help other men. By the way, if our work helps you and you want to go the extra mile, consider becoming a channel sponsor or sending a small thank you gift. It keeps the videos independent and lets me share more free tools, checklists and Q&A streams for this community. No pressure, your views and shares already mean a lot. One more note on mindset. Shame and secrecy are progress killers. Treat prostate care like brushing your teeth. Routine, matter-of-fact, and non-dramatic. Invite your partner into the process if that feels right. Couples who tackle health together tend to stick with it. In a moment, we'll stitch everything into a simple weekly plan. Before we do, please share this episode with one friend or brother who keeps delaying his checkup. You might spare him months of anxiety, and that's a real gift. The four pillar week and the exact Kegel routine. Here's a clear repeatable plan you can start today. Print it, save it or jot it in your phone. The secret is consistency, not perfection. Pillar one, annual medical checkups. If you're 50 plus or earlier with risk factors, talk with your clinician about PSA testing and a digital rectal exam. Ask how often is appropriate for you. Bring a written list of symptoms, frequency, urgency, weak stream, nighttime trips, and any meds or supplements. Data beats guessing. If numbers are borderline, ask about trend-based monitoring and next steps. Don't self-diagnose online. Pillar two, movement that changes hormones. Daily, 30, 40 minutes of brisk walking or light cycling. If nights are your problem time, do 10, 15 minutes after dinner. 
two or three days, weak short strength sessions, 15-25 minutes. Focus on big patterns, squat to a chair, hip hinge, push, pull. Keep it simple and steady. All week, micro movement. Stand up each hour, shake out the hips. Two sets of 10 calf raises. Blood flow is medicine. Pillar 3, anti-inflammatory food pattern. Plate formula, half non-starchy veg, a palm of protein, a thumb of healthy fat, optional fist of smart carbs at lunch. Favorites for prostate support, cooked tomatoes, tomato paste with olive oil, lycopene, fatty fish or algae-based omega-3s, cruciferous veg, berries, green tea, turmeric with black pepper. Fluids earlier in the day, taper after dinner. Cut alcohol on weeknights for two weeks and see how your nights improve. Pillar 4. Recovery and sleep. Aim for 7-8 hours. Protect a 45-minute wind down. Screens off, warm shower, dim lights, nasal breathing. Stress bleed off. 5 minutes of slow exhales. Inhale 4, exhale 6-8 or a short body scan before bed. Bathroom cue training. If the urge hits when you just went, pause, breathe, relax the belly pelvic floor, and wait 60-90 seconds before deciding.